had a small fire in the cigarette ashtray there. All of Gert's uh, possessions have been stolen from his apartment, and I'm dealing with some issues too. That's life behind the scenes. Andrew, come on over and show Andrew. Andrew did that to his hand the day before he left. That was French fry grease, which exploded all over him. I wasn't even my fault. It wasn't even your fault. But I'm sure you deserved it. So. All right, well, we should get rolling because the loading yes. time is such that we need to get, okay. get on the road. about that big now. But when I'm away from home, it's a nice little reminder that she's there. You know, she's sitting there with me. There's a song I sing during the set, which is about her. It's called Bluebird. Um, just a, like a way to remind me during my set of the reason I'm doing all this with my kids. Um, this one's called Bluebird. Sound check, so that means that it might break soon. So I'm just changing the strings, and new strings have a nicer tone. A lot of people don't like playing new strings uh, for a show or changing new strings right before a show because it, they don't like the sound. But I'm gonna play it a little bit before we go on stage, and then it'll sound sweet. <laughs> Suddenly it was no longer that. It had to become something else. 
to the 18 or so people that came to see me and face the corner and play, because if I turned around, it was ear splitting squeals. So this, this is a step up from that, a, a radical step up. But usually every show, there's some, there's some good reason that you're there. You just have to look, look harder sometimes than others. Sometimes I feel so goddamn trapped 
came from the flea market. Uh, I wander around flea markets all the time, all over, and sort of stores, and eventually, sooner or later, you find something like this. This is an H bar C. It's a very high quality Western shirt. Um, and I rescue them from the obscurity of the flea market, and I redeem them by taking them to some place where people will love and appreciate them. So I'll bring this here, and I will sell it tonight at the show. Uh, I'm not interested in wearing a shirt like this, but people in London are. And uh, whatever money I make from selling it, I have an auction. I donate the money to a charity called Doctors Without Borders. Last year I sold about 18 shirts at 18 shows and donated over $800 to the charity. Um, and I think uh, my total outlay was about $30 for all the shirts. So it worked out really, really well for everybody. But the people who bought the shirts got a, a, what, what my bass player calls a perfect souvenir. The show that a guy that they liked as a musician put the shirt that he wore during that show. Um, and I get to give the money to Doctors Without Borders, they benefit, and the flea market guy gets rid of his shirt. Every, everybody's, it's a positive, positive win-win situation. So I call it the shirt off my back campaign, and I wish more people would do it. Uh, can you imagine, you know, like if, uh, if the guy that sings in the Decemberists or Sting or Beck sold their shirt at the end of the show, how much money it would raise, put that money to charity, and then, because uh, charities are hard hit right now. Uh, for a very good cause, a kid with leukemia, we, we, we don't, from just doctors without borders. Um, I've been giving upwards of 100. Uh, I think we should start the bidding at about 15 pounds and take it from there. But we're not going to do that right now. Andrew's shirt will go for considerably less. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's the donation. Oh, another one. Yeah, that's a donation. Well, you're the um, top man. You could probably take the shirt. No one's bid on you yet. Do you want the shirt? Oh, wait, I'll bid more than that. <laughs> Will you? I'll I'll bid bid hold on. Than I'll take the shirt, but let's see whether... Why don't you... Listen oh, we have 20 for the shirt. 20 for the shirt. We need an auctioneer here. 20 for the shirt. Any more than 20? 20. Oh. Here's what you do. You can send another couple of pounds and you can share it. That's a fine that's idea. A good idea. That's a fine idea. Listen to this. I did this once at Shepherd's Bush, oh, yeah? opening for David Byrne, and I had a coat and it looked really silly. And I said, all right, I'm going to sell it. And after the show, the two people were bidding on it, a man and a woman, and he was like, 20 pounds. And she said, 30 pounds. And he said, 35. And she said, honey, I'll let you wear it at home. And they were married. <laughs> Thank you, sweet kids. What do you like about it? It's got a wicked voice. Um, Good haircut. Good haircut. I think it's absolutely I think it's gorgeous anyway. Thanks, sweet kids. Thank you. Thanks, I care. Really well, yeah. Yeah, it's really good. It's the first time I've seen it. And, um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Do you have a favourite song? Um, yeah, I really like the newspaper one. Which isn't on an album, apparently. Head down to the store. 
and buy me a newspaper. It can't be that hard. So, I guess, here I go. I'm walking out the door. I'm looking for the store. I see the store. I'll walk to the store to buy me a newspaper. I guess. Just give me a beer. seem to have a really good time. I enjoyed it very much. This is what you do at the end of the night after all the rock star activity is done. You become a, a moving company. <laughs> after you've done all your work. These are your cables, right, Andrew? Um, yes, both okay. of them. Yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, I don't need one I wish you luck. I don't, I don't feel comfortable just playing song, 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 song. Um, I don't feel like I make a whole lot of connection with the audience that way. But if you talk to them and mess with them and tease them a little bit, and you, you tend to get the extroverts who will, will start to talk back and then it's, it feels more like a human experience. Just standing on the stage singing is, it doesn't, some, some people are good at making it magical, but that's not, not what I do. The way it works is that when you're on tour, you, um, every night, if, if you collect the fee every night, you end up with fifteen or twenty thousand dollars in your, in your pocket. And that's not money that you keep, that's money that goes to pay hotel bills and credit card bills and all airplane fares. But walking around with $20,000 in your, in your pocket isn't a real good feeling. It actually makes a, a rather large lump in your pants, not a good lump either. All right, our day is done. We're finished, we're gonna go to the hotel room and fly to uh, Northern Ireland tomorrow. We thank you for joining us for this day and hope you'll check out our music, Stanton and Jim White, and of course Andrew Small, the resident genius here. Thank you and good night. Good night. Struggled a lot with, with my thoughts in my life and uh, this is a song sort of about that, about that issue uh, and all the other songs will be about that issue too. <laughs> And a girl in my heart in a state of mind Jesus is the man with a plan He's a shorty Mexican friend of mine And small town clowns drag you down You can't leave your pays behind See the wipers in the rain Tapping out time Coming up on a new state line I wanna be a jailbird From the prison of my own damn mind Go and get me a fast car Sit out and see what I can find Break up the well of tears And disappear Leave myself behind Go and be a jailbird From the prison of my own damn mind 
like, no, he did not have an emergency, but he did have a question about the moon. Then the man pointed to the moon and asked, is that a half moon or a quarter moon, according to the report. The police officer stated, I asked the defendant if he dialed 911 to ask a question about the moon. The man confirmed that he did. He was arrested and is scheduled to appear in court June 3rd.